panel, I think we learned a lot, and I know um, we are running a bit late, so I won't take a lot of time. I'll try to keep it brief and you know have a few minutes in the end, open up for questions. Uh, but I always like to make it interactive, so I just want to start with. Um, so, a couple of days earlier, I think there was a very historic moment uh, in Web3 where uh, anybody hear what happened a couple of days ago? Uh, Bitcoin broke all-time high, so that was the first time we got all-time high. So, so yay for that. I just want to start with one quick question, like. Just a quick, maybe few people, what do you think will be the price of Bitcoin at the end of 2024? Anybody? 120? 100? Sorry? So roughly, so 50K, 100K, 120K, anybody way off or way below? 80K? Okay. Good. So the, generally, the consensus is it looks like around, you know, all the way from 50k all the way to 100, 120. So I think like within our fund also, the consensus we have is somewhere conservatively should be around you know, 100 to 150k. That's the consensus. Now uh, I think we broke all time high. That was actually better than what we what we had anticipated. We feel that there will be a little bit of correction, uh, but it was very exciting run so far. So maybe what I'll do is I'll start with a quick background about myself and our fund, what we do, and then I think. Coming to the topic, I want to cover what are the key trends and then in the end open it up for questions. And I'll try to limit it again to 10 odd minutes, don't want to take a lot of time. So very quickly on um, myself, so I have been in the investment space for a decade and a half now. Uh, been with Bordless almost from day one, uh, uh, coming to four years now. Before that I was with a different VC fund. Um, uh, and then before that I was in the US uh, working with a pension fund out of Chicago. Um, um, and uh, on Bordless, so we are a uh, early Web3 native core Web3 VC fund. Uh, we are currently deploying from our fifth and sixth funds, uh, over 250 companies in the portfolio. Um, uh, we believe in uh, our core DNA is a lot of the team comes from a strong entrepreneurial background. Uh, we take pride and feel honored in working very closely with entrepreneurs uh, post investment. Uh, so naturally, we are more inclined to come in in the pre-seed seed stage. Uh, we do both equity and token rounds. Um, and uh, headquartered in uh, a lot of the team sits in Miami. Uh, we have a sizable team in India. Uh, I'm a partner in the fund. Uh, I manage the overall investment process end to end. And uh, we also have a partner in Spain. Uh, so our thesis is we are ecosystem builders. We, we ran a couple of funds building the entire Algorand ecosystem. Then we expanded to Helium. Uh, we built the entire Helio, Helium ecosystem and from there expanded to the broader deep in category, which is uh, decentralized physical infrastructure. Um, and then from there expanded to what we are currently doing, which is a cross-chain fund, which is focuses on inter cross-chain interoperable infrastructure. Um, along with that, so the current three funds which are liquid from which we are deploying are one is a deep in fund, a decentralized physical infrastructure, second is a cross chain fund uh, which focuses on interoperable infrastructure and the third is a liquid fund, we also deploy in liquid and soon to be liquid tokens. So that's a quick background on, on the company. Uh, so coming coming back to the topic here, I think I just want to get a sense of uh, you know how many people here in the audience, they, they represent enterprises or is it mostly a retail crowd. Maybe quick show of hand, like how many people are from enterprises? Okay. And how many like retail retail investors who, who participate in Web3? Cool, cool. So, so maybe I'll keep it a little bit of, little bit balanced. Uh, so I think there are three main, uh, I think, trends which are impacting uh, primarily blockchain for enterprises. I think what we already know, uh, one is, which I think all of us are aware, one is um, uh, the entire farm to fork or supply chain visibility, right from you know where, for example, this cabbage was plucked by which farmer, all the way to when you are actually eating your you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, algobi, you can say, okay, okay, this was the cauliflower which came from this flower and here, right, and it, that you can trace the entire thing. So that I think a lot of us know it. The other thing is kind of on the payment side, that I think also we are kind of aware how blockchain, how CBDC use cases are happening. So what I want to focus on is three other use cases which are quite interesting, which 
I feel might add value which a lot, not a lot of people know uh, that we are seeing. Um, so the first one of them is uh, Deepin, which is decentralized physical infrastructure. Now the ethos of Web3 is basically taking power away from the 1% and giving it to the 99%. So what happened a couple of days back, uh, I think not a couple of days, maybe last week was uh, Google Play Store, they blocked uh, Nokri, uh, they blocked Bharat Matrimony, all these apps, right? So that is the power which centralization has. And Web3 allows you to take that power away from centralized entities and make it decentralized. That's the whole concept of decentralization, where you have governance models, where people participate and they can say, okay, what this company can do, what this entity can do. Um, so that's the entire concept of Web3. So decentralized physical infrastructure builds on that. We feel that, so other than uh, Bitcoin hitting all time high, the other key event, you know, which I think will be a milestone, which we will tell our grandchildren is uh, how the Bitcoin spot if ETF was uh, approved by SEC in early this year. That again is a historic moment that basically allows all pension funds, the vanguards, banks of the world to come and participate in Bitcoin, right? So that is all your teachers, pension funds, everything coming and buying, actually getting exposure to Bitcoin. So uh, with that, we see that the other big catalyst, which is going to bring mass adoption for, for Web2 users to come into Web3 is, so that's the first one, uh, decentralized physical infrastructure. And maybe I'll just give two or three quick examples here. The idea is, for example, today, most of our telecom network is driven by centralized entities. So again, Airtel, Vodafone, and so on, right? They have their towers through which we kind of speak. So what what uh, what is happening very interestingly is in Deepin. So Helium is uh, one of the entities. They are working very closely with, for example, Telefonica now. And what they are doing throughout Mexico, users can actually help amplify in areas where cell phone coverage is not good and actually earn you know kind of helium tokens for it so that's a very beautiful concept of you know expanding the scope of uh, mobile coverage uh, building on top of that for example uh, there are a few more very interesting you know use cases uh, one is uh, i think the previous panel also talked about rendered so you know how do you leverage the gpu compute power which is spread globally to actually do animations and so on right um, then other interesting very interesting use case and these are all companies which actually uh, we are investors in render we are investors in uh, helium uh, we are uh, uh, investors in a company called hive mapper so again google maps is centralized what hive mapper does is you can just whenever you are traveling you can actually just install your dash cam and it will take you know, uh, a map of while you are traveling, it will create a map and that is decentralized map. So they, at this point, they have already covered 30% of the entire earth. And by doing so, you actually participate and you earn rewards for that. So then there is another company called GeoNet, where what happens in satellite imaging is it is not accurate. What, what GeoNet allows you to do is you can get pinpoint to the millimeter accuracy. And again, you get awarded for, and, and it is using your normal compute power, which is already there in your phone, which is anyway being unused. So this, this is one of the trends, uh, decentralized physical infrastructure. Um, and we are very deep in that. We have already two funds. Uh, we are going to launch a third, third fund from there in that space. The second one, uh, I think key area is uh, AI plus Web3. Uh, there are broadly like two subcategories here. One is, again coming to render where the idea is that today for example if you know nvidia uh, nvidia has like you know gone on top of facebook on top of microsoft why because it, there's a supply demand gap there there are not enough gpus to fulfill the demand of generative ai right? that is the that is the gap that's why it has you know pumped up so much so what the idea about uh, in in within ai plus web3 there are two streams one is on the infrastructure side the idea is how all of us through our you know kind of laptops desktops and also the huge data center providers there is a lot of unused gpu power which is lying idle you know how do you use this unused gpu power and again get rewarded for it so that's on the infrastructure side and the second one which is very interesting is when you use ai you have to train models and for train models you have to label like okay this is a cat you know this is a plane and uh, what 
a lot of models are doing is so there are a couple of companies which are looking at sapien fraction ai which basically reward users you know for identifying so you just and they are gamifying it so every day you know you get paid all you have to do is just go and label okay this is a plane this is a this and there are actually people in you know kind of uh, developing economies which actually like thailand and all where they actually that's what they do they just go and help label data objects and this labeling then feeds all the llm models so that's a couple of you know kind of interesting trends which are happening web3 plus ai uh, in that space so broadly again just to recap the two things one was deep in one was web3 plus ai and uh, the third broad thing i think trend is um, uh, rwas you might have heard this names so these are called real world assets the idea is uh, how do you tokenize real world assets and bring them on chain so we invested in a company called zoth recently zoth.io uh, they basically are tokenizing t bills you know there is a lot of trade credit which goes on and the problem is that you today cannot invest in this you know or you have to buy the entire t bill or you have to have a lot of money to invest in trade financing to get into trade financing by tokenizing it they create liquid markets for example for these uh, you know debt products uh, along with that real world in uh, we are also investors in centrifuge um, and i know bunch of other companies some of these other companies are tokenizing carbon credits so you tokenize carbon credits and then it becomes easier for you to create a marketplace from both supply and demand side you, there are also companies uh, which are tokenizing art for you know tokenizing wine and whiskey and creating tokens for that which can then liquid markets can then be created on top of that so those are i think the key you know high three level trends which are i think quite unique which maybe a lot of people are not aware about which we are seeing uh, so uh, deep in uh, ai plus web3 and third is rws which i think will will kind of to a large extent define the trends of blockchain especially in the enterprise front um, and then maybe very quickly i just you know just to round up on the retail front what we are seeing is uh, you know uh, a number of privacy protection models like fully homomorphic encryption uh, what we are also very excited about is uh, bitcoin ordinals how you take how you build programmability on top of bitcoin uh, uh, we are also excited about uh, lrts which is liquid restaking so you know how you take eth and you know companies building on top of eigen layer where you go and earn additional yield on top so those are some again key trends which which uh, we are seeing so uh, with that and pause uh, any quick questions we can take and then i'll we'll close it up yeah sure uh, Sure, sure. So the question is basically, what kind of interest are we seeing from Web2 asset managers, likes of BlackRock? So, so very interesting question. So, by the way, we have some companies in the portfolio which actually is not announced yet, which are going to come up with a partnership with some of these asset managers. The idea is that again, I think the key pivotal moment in this in this our lifetime, you know, which uh, which we can tell our. That's how I say that I will tell my grandchildren that you know I was alive when. Uh, bitcoin spot etf was approved so that was a pivotal moment which allowed all the vanex of the world black rocks of the world vanguard of the world to come and participate in 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 bitcoin in web3 and i think so what we are seeing is a lot of them are so we actually you know saw some real estate tokenization some rwa is happening in 2017 18 but it was ahead of its time while there was a primary market there was not a secondary market so once you bought an rwa what will you do there has to be a liquid secondary market but now what we are seeing is with this institutional adoption there is liquidity in the market there is a liquid secondary market as well that is rws can be created so yes we are definitely seeing a lot of adoption the likes of some of the names you mentioned you know they are definitely going to come and and tokenize whatever you can think of so whether it is debt whether it is art funds whether it is carbon credits you know anything which can be tokenized will be tokenized any other question then yeah sure Yes. What happens if that company dies? What happens to the token earned by so many people, right? So that was something was running in my mind. Sure, sure, sure. So the question is basically, you know, 
uh, okay, the whole concept of Web3 is you know, giving power to the 99%. But if a company is developing a token, so what happens, right? So the idea is generally what happens is you start with a centralized entity where they define tokenomics, they define you know, uh, what will the token be used for and so on. But over time that entity is then decentralized. So you have a foundation or a DAO structure where on the same token once it is listed, you add governance to it. So the community then votes. Okay, what will happen, for example, and they are called like improvement proposal. So like you have EIPs, you might have heard of uh, Ethereum improvement proposals, like that you have hip, uh, Helium improvement proposals. So people submit improvement proposals and then the community votes on, okay, whether they should be passed or not. So I'll give you an example, for example, Uniswap. So when Uniswap decided that they want to move out of ETH and go to BNB, Binance, they had a community proposal on which bridge to use. Should we use Wormhole or Layer 0? And then the community approved that we should use Wormhole. So over time, everything it starts generally with centralized and then using they, they give governance properties to their token. And then it becomes decentralized to an extent for good projects. The team actually can then go and they can do other things. It has become fully decentralized. Yeah, last, yeah, we'll wrap up. Okay, cool. Okay, thanks. Thanks, guys.